In this video, we're going to look at how you can use the search and find DAX functions in Power BI. We're going to go through how to use both of them and their key differences, if you didn't know yet. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fenan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So you'll be familiar with these two DAX functions if you worked with text a lot in DAX. And in fact, I even covered a few of them in the past already, and we've also even gone through the search function in that video. Did you know that there's also a similar function to search, the find function? this one. In principle, they work the same way, but there are differences that are not so obvious at first glance. Before we go through the demo, let's have a look at the documentation first and what Microsoft says about these two DAX functions. Search is case insensitive and accent sensitive, so this is key for later. You'll see in the syntax you need to provide it a text to find at which text and then you can give it a starting number as an optional value. You can also give it a value that it should return if the operation does not find the substring in your text. If we flick through the documentation for uh, find, you'll see that it returns the starting position of one text string within another text string. Find is case sensitive. If you pay attention here in the syntax, you'll find that it's oddly similar and in fact, it's the exact same syntax as the search DAX function. You, you need to provide it a find text within a text. You need to provide it a starting number and what the value should return if it doesn't find anything in that substring. If you look at what they return, it even matches the return value. So it returns the point, the starting point of the text of what you found. So the two main differences that I found are mostly here in the remarks, but we'll go through together in this demo now. Here is a very simple table that I created for this demo. So it's just a table with three columns, ID, name, and email. And we're going to use this table to demo how the search and find functions work. So let's say we want to find out which character in the email column the at symbol sits at. So let's do that. Let's create a new column. Let's create two columns, one for the search and one for the find. So we'll start with the search. We'll just name it search. Start typing search here. So it asks for four parameters. We want to find the at symbol within the email column. The starting position, we can leave it empty. And if you want to just leave it empty, we just add another comma. And in the not found value, you need to add blank here. So basically we're saying if you don't find at in the email column, like for example, you will see that on our line seven, it doesn't have any values at all. It just should just give me blank. If you hit enter like that, if you hit enter, you will see that it will give us the position of the at character within the email columns. So you'll see David Gilbert, for example, it's not there. That's why we have it blank here and the same here with Andy Smith. So having to add the optional parameter here to show what it should be if it doesn't find a text within your substring. From what I read, it seems to replicate how it worked in Excel, but I don't think it's very intuitive because if you, for example, it's an optional parameter and if I simply just ignore that and I just hit enter, you will see that it will simply error out. If I like do it like this, for example, and this is supposed to be intended, uh, I don't think it's very intuitive. So probably it would make sense for this to be mandatory or just default it to blank if you can't find it in the string, not error out. But anyway, we skipped the third parameter and we'll go through that in a second. So I'm just gonna bring back the blank here so that we don't error out in this column. So we skipped the third parameter 
but it basically allows you to define from which character you want to start your search from. What this does is finds the character in the string and simply returns the position of that character from left. So pretty simple, right? Find does the exact same thing. And to put this in contrast, I'm just gonna create a new column and we'll just do the same thing for find. Uh, what I'm gonna do to make it even easier for us, I'm gonna simply copy our code here, add a new column, paste, and we'll just simply replace this with find and we'll keep the syntax the exact same. Hit enter, there we go you will see that they are doing the exact same thing here. So let's modify these two together and let's try to look for something else. So let's say in the name column, we want to get or find anyone named James. So we'll just change it for both of these and we'll say, okay, in the name column, let's look for anyone named James. If I copy the same thing, Hit enter here and go to find. Do find like this. Here's where we encounter the first difference is that find is case sensitive. So for example, here, because in the search or the find text of the find, we specified we want to look for James. Now, because J is an uppercase, it's only looking for that string in that specific case. And if you notice James Legree here, his name starts with James, but it's a James with the lowercase J, which is why find does not find it. Search is case insensitive. So no matter if the character is in uppercase or lowercase, it's all the same with the search function. Now, before I forget, I wanted to show you what the third parameter does. So it works the same on both these two functions, really. And so if we just go back to the search here and let's say we look for a character A from the name column, you will see if I hit enter, it will simply just give me the position of the first A that it finds in the column from left to right. Now, if we add this optional parameter, the starting position to three. You will see that some strings will have an A, but no values being returned to the search column here. And basically the starting position ignores the first number of characters you specify from its search. So it still returns the position of the character as a whole, but in this case, it will skip the first three characters. If we go back to the documentation here, another difference is that the find text parameter in the search function have the ability to use wildcards to enhance your search. So for example, if we go back to our demo here, our last two people, Andy Smith and Annie Smith, we wanna get these two rows in the search. So we're gonna say, uh, we're just gonna remove that starting value and let's look for let's say anyone that has Andy and obviously as normal we can get Andy but we want to get Annie as well to do that we can simply replace the D with a question mark so the question mark acts as a wildcard and it's basically saying anyone that starts with an A and N any character in this question mark accept it and then it should end with a Y. So that's why it's giving me Annie and Andy. You can also use the wildcard character asterisk. So this will give you, for example, any number of characters replaced in the middle. So for example, if we put a asterisk Y, which is basically saying, look for any words that start with an A and ends with a Y. doesn't matter what is in between. If you wanted to do the same thing in the find function, and if we go back to the documentation here, you'll find that that option is not available for you here. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how to use the search and find DAX functions in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. 
if you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.